Good afternoon, ladybugs and yellow jackets. Welcome to this Sunday's episode of Handmade Home Shopping here on Fate Productions. I am your host, Fairy Princess Lolly. And of course, before we jump right into things today, I want to first say, please, uh, if you will, like, subscribe, and buzz the bell if you would like to receive notifications of our future shows. We do three shows a week, Handmade Home Shopping, Fay News on Wednesdays, and Author Reads on Fridays. So. Don't, be sure to be informed so that you can check those out. We do giveaways as well, about eight a month actually. So if you would like to be entered into our giveaways automatically, all of them, you can do so by either joining our channel, joining our Patreon or both. And then you can have a maximum of three entries per person for everything that we do. So, uh, with that said, then also a shout out to today's show sponsor, which is Pixie's Potions. And Pixie's Potions is a single mom run Tacoma based business, and they are focused on healthy alternatives to everyday personal care and pain relief products. So they feature high quality, responsibly sourced ingredients from Better Shea Butter, Majestic Pure Essential Oils, and Nature's Best CBD. They also uh, specialize in small batch handcrafted blends so that everything is sure to be, you know, fresh and not having been sat on the shelf for years or something. Um, and they have a uh, body, face, and beard care products. Uh, so something for everybody out there a little bit, which includes their signature CBD pain relief. Uh, please check out their full line of work at www.fixiespotions.com. That link should be going down there in the ticker. It is also in the low bar. You guys can go there at any time and see not only today's show sponsor with links, but also all of our vendors that you see here today, their information is there and it will stay up. So if you are in Tacoma, you can use in or near, you can use the coupon code local deliver all one word. And if you make an order that is $20 or more within a 20 mile radius, then you can get a free local delivery. So please check them out. And with that said, then that brings us in to our show proper. And I am here today with our very, this, I'm really excited to have you here, Mira, because you are the very first musician that we have ever had on the show. So please, um. if you will, um, welcome, and I love your unicorn necklace. I just noticed that. Uh, oh, <laughs> it looks cool and handmade. It is, yeah, by Art of Wonders. Um, she's on Etsy, I think. She makes beautiful jewelry. Nice. Uh, well, introduce yourself, yes, and tell us who you are and what you do, and then we'll take a look at some of your stuff. Right, so I'm Mira Morningstar. I live in the mag magical Glastonbury, the Isle of Avalon. Um, some of you might have heard of it. Um, it's full of myths and legends. Um, mm -hmm. And um, the mythology and the energies here are really fueling my my creative output. And um, I make create I make ethereal ambient music, uh, sometimes dark ambient. Um, and I've recently created um, a unicorn album called Realm of the Unicorns, which is um, good for meditation and relaxation, um, or you know just relaxing background music. I I was kind of and I was inspired to write it at a really stressful time in my life a few years ago where I was suffering from oh. you know a, a hell of a lot of uh, issues so much chaos happened in my life a, a, quite similar to 2020 <clears throat> where loads <laughs> of things happened like I'm even losing my voice just thinking about it so you know um I had to come up with something to calm myself down and to have to have my own soundtrack really um and so I um, called upon the unicorns um, to help me because they stand for healing, don't they? Um, yes, they do. So, you know, what better creature to ask to, for help? So um, I asked them to, to help me um, write this album. And um, yeah, so the outcome is uh, is this. And um, that's what it looks like when it's a CD form. And I love um, the beautiful artwork on the cover too. This is the one that I discovered your music through, which led to this whole uh, this whole thing. I went down a rabbit hole somewhere and I was like, this is amazing music. And then I bought it. And then I, and so I can confirm that it is absolutely, I have put the whole CD on on repeat and just listened to it and then gone to work and done things. It's, oh, it's awesome. exactly what you say it's, it's for, so. 
Yeah, I feel like, you know, you know how when you, I mean, I think every creative person can pretty much um, relate to this point, right? You feel at some point when you've created it that it wasn't really you. I don't know if you can relate. Um, it feels like there's something flowing through you. And um, mm -hmm. that's kind of what happened with this album. I feel like I was just a bit of a vessel for it, really. Um, because I, I myself got so much benefit from it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really honored that it's helped so many people. Um, it's really beautiful. It's a really beautiful thing. Well, so and, um, we, oh, sorry, go ahead and finish. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that, that was it, really. <laughs> well, so I, we have the ability to listen to some clips of this here live on the show, and I wanted to share this with our viewers. Do you, is now a good time for us to go there and check some yeah, out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to hear, let me just pull it up here really quick. So this is also your website where people can go to, I think that, I think that they can go here to buy your music as well as get a sample of it. Am I correct in saying that? That's right. Yeah. So um, if you'd like to buy the album, it's um, mirrormorningstar.co.uk forward slash shop. Um, and um, there you can download the MP3s. There's also um, an option on the website to buy the CD, um, but I also have free songs for you. If you sign up to uh, receive my emails, you'll get two songs of Realm of the Unicorns and um, my single Moon Cocoon, which I released last year. And um, yeah, so um, that's the best way really to stay in touch with me because all my releases from now on are pretty much only going to be via my website. Um, I'm not really much on streaming sites these days anymore. I prefer to keep it small and close knit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. Well, let's check this out then. And I'm going to just go ahead and push play here on the very first one. I'm going to rewind it a little though. So we're going to go with some little 10 second samples here of some of Mira's songs. And so this is the very first one, Pegasus and I. And I'm curious when you did these, did you have some kind of specific inspiration? Was there sort of a meditative journey. I don't want to get too personal if it's really personal for you, but I would love to hear kind of the inspiration and story behind maybe some of these songs, if you have any that you would be willing to share. Yes. So um, Pegasus and I is um, is basically about leaving this realm and, you know, all the stresses and everything that doesn't serve you. Um, you, you imagine yourself at the back of a Pegasus, or at least I did when I wrote it. Um, and the music is still kind of more uh, lively um, if you compare mm -hmm. this song to the rest of the tracks. This one is still a bit more upbeat, lively. A lot of Ooh, things are loud. happening. And the reason is because I, I wanted to create something where your mind, where mm -hmm. your mind can sort of ease itself into, you know, a meditative state first. Like if you're, if you're, for example, really anxious or you know, just really stressed out. It's difficult to listen to calming music and then just bang, be in a calming mood. I feel like you kind of have to trick your mind into this sort of process. And um, so the first song carries you out of this realm and into the unicorn realm where, you know, you're you're prepared to heal. And it so, does. It has these cool, breezy, airy sounds going with it. I, I'm pretty sure if I play this in like these short little clips at a time, we'll, we'll be okay. This is Lilac Waterfalls. Yeah, so in this one, you would have already arrived at the at the new realm. And here you go into the, the pool of, of, of lilac water surrounded by beautiful waterfalls. And you just imagine yourself being completely washed free and clear of everything that doesn't serve you. Everything that you've carried with you from this other realm, from our realm, you know, you can wash it off, everything that doesn't belong to you. and. Um, yeah, that, that's actually one of my favorites for some reason. Um, that's the one I put on when I have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> it's That makes sense, actually. I, I feel like just listening to you talk about it, I'm like, you know, I'm sure that this could be somehow transposed into being an awesome meditative, like a short meditative journey to, uh, guided meditation is the word I'm looking for. And I just, I love the ethereal, it's almost like a breathing sound, right? That kind of 
goes with that. I just, I don't know, I love that sound. River Cave Sunset. Here we go. So in this one, if you were meditating through this album, you would have already been at it for about five, six, ten minutes. So hopefully by now, everything would have calmed within yourself. So you were going into this internal cave. And um, this was actually inspired by a dream I had. Um, it was a really lucid, vivid dream um, where I was. it was sunset. I was um, in a wa near waterfalls. So there was water all around me. And I was just hiking along um, this little stream and um everything started to get really dark um and then out of nowhere it was a little cave and um and a unicorn came out of it i was so excited i was just oh my god you know i felt so honored and mm -hmm. like, i can't believe there's a unicorn here i was so excited and and um i think it came up to me and and i i, I can't really describe the feeling in words but i felt i felt so cleansed and so I don't know, happy, blown away. Um, and then I woke up and I just had to write it all down. And, well, and, purity and, is one of their symbolisms, right? So yeah. that makes sense. Like, and that's what you were asking for. So, well, believe it or not, that short little thing was over 10 minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that means that we come along to the time uh, that, that we part ways here. I just wanted to uh, remind everybody so now I know that uh, I know that you're not participating in the magic word exactly, but that's kind of already because you have your free copies that people can get by joining your email list that are on your website. So normally the magic word means you get a free gift with your purchase, but people can already go do that. So there was no need for yeah. the magic word because you already have the unicorn magic out there for everybody. Uh, it's true. Um, I could. I mean, if um, I, I was. I wasn't. I didn't include a magic word because I wasn't really sure what to offer. But I have something now, so we could always oh. add one if you wanted. If for CDs only, because it's something that would have to be shipped. Right. But yeah. If, um, if a CD is ordered, just just put unicorn in the notes or send me a message. Our unicorn. magic word is the same for everybody each week, and this week it's Frost oh. Moon. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I thought I had to make it up. <laughs> nope, you don't have to make it up. <laughs> Frost Moon, <is> beautiful. <laughs> Well, this is what we call January. So, because at least around here, it's still frosty and freezy and snowy and cold. I mean, we have less snow than I want, but I, I digress. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, if you do, if folks do put Frost Moon in only when ordering then a physical CD, you can include, you can include something special for them in their little sh shipping package. But other than that, folks can visit your website. They can get uh, they can sign up for your mailing list to get their three free songs. And then also this is a great place to purchase your work. And thank you so much for coming on the show and being our first musician. Huzzah. Oh, thank you for having me. I love it. <laughs> I'm glad that, I'm glad that our first one was a beautiful unicorn. Oh, no. thank you so much, Lolly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so thank you. Have a good, I guess, Monday for you since you're all the way across the pond. So a good yeah. week. <laughs> I'm going to bed soon. <laughs> oh. All right, then dream well, my lady. <laughs> Thank you, lovely. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. All right. We're off to a pretty good start here today. That was fun. I've never done something like that, uh, at least not here on this show. So that was uh, pretty, pretty exciting. And I will just remind everybody that you can always find the links to our vendors again in the low bar of anywhere you should be watching. So our next uh, vendor here is Fenrir's Chains. I see you down there. Hello, hi. hi. How are you today? I'm doing good, and you? I am doing all right. I'm I'm up and going. So, uh, well, so please, if you will, introduce yourself to our audience. Tell us who you are and what you make, and give any shout outs to people you want to give shout outs to people, shows, whatever it is. Uh, I'm Shelby. I run Fenrir's Chains. I make chainmail jewelry and accessories. Uh, have don't have too too much right now, but I'm working on building up more. Yeah. <laughs> Well, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Wisconsin, actually. Okay, so the Midwest. Does, is oh, yeah. basically the Midwest? Okay. Yep, we're the Midwest. Um, and then um, what do, do you have home shows or conventions that you go to that got maybe got you into this or got you started? 
I actually haven't done any shows or conventions yet. I hope to with like yeah, I kind of started my stuff like within the last year. Yeah. Um, so everything kind of shut down. I was supposed to do a local flea market, but that just didn't oh, work fun. out. But within like yeah. the next year or two, I hope to start doing some shows. Would have been fun anyway, if yeah. things had been happening in 20, 2020. So, well, I'm going to turn the screen over to you, but you'll be able to hear me. I'm not going to be on mute or anything. And let's, uh, let's see some of the work that you have for us today. Okay. So the first piece I actually want to show is like one of my favorites back here. Got it. There we go. So this is like a choker necklace. So it goes like tight up there, but okay. it's scale mail. Oh, hello. I don't know if you can see it that well with the. Well, if you hold it right about where it's at, but then ang no, back, back, back back a little a little and then angle it oh there we go okay Get a little flashlight going there we go. oh that's great there we go so yeah it's black scales i so don't think i could resist petting my decolletage constantly oh I yeah wearing it's it. it's a lot of fun <laughs> to play with <laughs> i really like working with scales um they just give a really nice look like you can see it catches the light as it like yes. it moves so that's it's always sweet. really fun to do um I also have like this scale necklace. This is another choker. Let me get the flashlight back again. Like a pretty leaf or a pine cone almost. Yes, yeah, so those are like, they have like dragon scale patterns on them. Oh, I was just going to say, themselves. that's fascinating. Yeah, you can kind of see it. A little honeycomb pattern. Can you, that's a fun are you able to show us uh, with the light on it a little bit what the, I'm not, do you call it a weave? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Of the so, actual like, chain. The this right part. here, yes. Uh, it's the same on both of them. It's a helm's weave, so it's gonna. Yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Let me take this out of your way here. So that's there we go. So you can kind of see the weave how it sits. It's a little. Mm -hmm. It's decorative, but it's nothing like. It doesn't take away from like the statement of like the scales that I have right. going. Um, I also have like a couple like earrings that I've made. I got kind of, it's a little dark in here. That's okay. Uh, the, the light, got, the shining the light on it is working. Ah, uh, there you so go. These three different here. pairs. Yes, okay, I see. The top pair, which has like kind of like a mini helm's weave and then a single scale. Those are like fun little danglies. And then I have these like, oh, there we go. These shaggy ones here. They'll uh -huh. clink as you wear them. And then I some of the, make that oh yeah. <laughs> They're fun. I make keychains out of them too. So like you, you hear me when I walk into the room and the bottom pair is going to be like the same, but it uses like a rose gold as like the main oh, ring. So it's adds a little pop of color. I got different variations of those rose gold ones with like the black scales or I also have a pair with the um, pattern scales as well. I really like those pattern scales. I can't really recall having seen something like that before. Those are cool. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently I'm not the only one who thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I also have some bracelets as well that I enjoy making. Uh, let me see if I can kind of set my phone. That should work. Okay. So I got like this bracelet. So it's kind of like a Byzantine weave. So it's like the Oh Connected yes, I can see that with a little heart charm in the middle. Hey, that's a not not a bad gift for Valentine's Day. Oh coming yeah, up. exactly. And it I actually like have another fun. bracelet with that same heart charm on it, but it's a little chunkier. Uh -huh. so it's a little Ooh, fun. I like chunky. <laughs> oh yeah, so it's this weave, or it's it's called Sweet Pea actually. So Aww. I feel like that's also very fitting for Valentine's Day with a little heart in the middle. Yes. Um, most of my clasps, I do use lobster claws with extenders on them, but I can change them out for like the toggle clasps where, okay, where they like these type of clasps where you have to like loop them through to hold on to. Yes. So if somebody wanted you to change them out, that's an easy yeah. thing they could just request oh, in, yeah. your Etsy, in your Etsy store. Yeah, it's just send me a quick message and I can easily change that out. Um, I also have a couple where the rings themselves are like the extenders where like this bracelet has like a kind of nice where it's um, 
the big rings connect like the small little like Byzantines, which are like uh -huh. same as that like first bracelet I showed. Yeah. Oh, that's the clasp. <laughs> there we go. It's like a little Byzantine. Bit. And you there could use go. that to change the size of the bracelets. You just clip that lobster claw into whatever size you need to fit. Um, I got little scale bracelets. Now, I'm taking a quick peek here at your Etsy store, too, while you talk. And I'm seeing that you have a lot of different color choices as well. Can you speak to that a little bit? Um... Ooh, I don't even know what I, I got for purples choices. and reds. Yeah. And um, some like and all the different gold. pieces. I have uh, bracelets, just a simple European foreign one. I actually didn't pull that one down for some reason. Oh, that's um, okay. It's what just like a, show us, though? I mean, show us the thing as well. I'm sorry? You were just holding something up. Oh, yeah, this little scale bracelet. You could wear it as like an anklet where it kind of fits on and Yes. And so what I'm seeing in your Etsy store is you have different colors of scales and of the rings that go on there. Yeah, I can get different colored rings. So like they're anodized. It, it's mostly aluminum that I've been working with. It's a lighter ring. It's cheaper. So it's a little more cost effective for everybody. Doesn't break the bank when you buy want to buy a nice piece of jewelry. Right. <laughs> Which is always something important. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can get different colors in them. Uh, I have some rose gold, which is the same color as like the earrings that I was sh that I was showing earlier. So like these earrings. Let me see yes. I'm gonna... Yeah, so like it's rose gold in there, kind of. Those are yeah. actually anodized aluminum rings that make them look like they're a fancier metal. Now, so if somebody wanted, say, a custom piece or a piece customized, maybe they like the say the style of earring that you have, but they mm -hmm. want it to be in a different color to, I don't know, yeah. go with maybe their Hogwarts house, right? right? Are you able to do something like that? Yeah, I have uh, I have the option on my shop for like custom orders. You just Ooh. click that button and get to chat and we can figure out what you need and best way to go about that. So here's your shop. Oh, right here, request a custom order. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, I'm just kind of was clicking through and looking at looking at some of the things. Here. What are these little guys right here? Those are just little um, pendants. So, like, you can get them and put them on, like, a necklace or whatever. Okay. Um, I have, like, the one single big gold one and then a bunch of smaller little ones that I've made. And then this is also another pendant? Yeah. I like the black and pink, but I'm partial to pink. Shocking nobody. Uh <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. So yeah. we're going to come up here for 30. And uh, I want, uh, I just want to remind everybody again, your information is there in the low bar in the ticker. They can find you. Do you have any last things you'd like to say to everybody before we bid you adieu this afternoon? Not that I really know of. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for showing yeah. us your work. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Have a good Sunday. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Moving right along. Those are kind of some good gift ideas for Valentine's. We still we have almost a month. That's plenty of time to go shopping and get the things delivered. Let's see. So chair and chisel is our next vendor. And I do see you down there. Hello, my lady. Greetings, friends and foes. Look at you. You are all kinds of fancied up this afternoon. You look fantastic. Nice. Yes. I like to go by Onyxana in this outfit. Onyxana. Well, Onyxana, a name which I love, uh, that's a beautiful name. Please, if you will, tell us uh, what, what you make and where you're from and a shout out to your home kingdom or fairs, fests. And then I'll turn the whole screen over to you and you can show us your work. Wonderful. Uh, so I currently reside in Katy, Texas. Um, I grew up in Lynchburg, Virginia. If anyone's from there, it's not a huge town, but it's a good town. Um, so a lot different. Uh, we have summer all year long. Uh, we specialize in custom leather armor and other leather novelties, if you will. Um, and so we have a shop on Etsy and we have a shop, we have our own website. We're on Amazon and Couple other all of the places. Well. 
<laughs> yeah, it's 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 been fun. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the whole screen over to you here and you can show us your work. I, I see you have your beautiful model behind you there. <laughs> I do, I do, yeah. So um, this is uh, one of our latest pieces. Uh, we're going to have modeled in a photo shoot coming up um, actually with a horse, which is amazing. I love horses, um, but yeah, this is gonna be modeled by Kayla Smith. Um, at Real Kaya Smith on uh, Instagram, it's it's constructed of leather. We've got a caribou hide. Um, wow! This is the cloak here. It's the cloak's velvet. Um, let's see. Let's I like see. the look of those bracers that are on. Is it possible to to bring her closer and let us see those close up? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I can move this camera. Hopefully, it's not too noisy. But. Oh, yeah, this is actually cool. done hand painted by my assistant Lexi. She did an amazing job. I wish I had that kind of talent with my hands, but yeah, the whole thing we've been working to put together, and it's going to be modeled with a very gorgeous horse, one of those ones with the big mane, the Warlander. So uh, getting the warrior woman feel going on. Yeah, there. <laughs> and so we've got some bridles that we're going to model on that horse. Here's one of them. One oh, of our bridal set. What? Cool. Uh, Labradorite stone in the center, and some other stones on the nose band there. Is that a typical part of what you make? Is horse horse gear like that? Yeah. So that's one part of our our business. So we we specialize we specialize in the leather armor, but then I also like to add the element. I mean, when you think Renaissance, medieval, you think the pretty horses. At least I do. Right. Uh, I grew up riding horses, so it's it's kind of a passion of mine. And so I like to make the fantasy bridles to go with it. We're really excited about the photo shoot. Um, unfortunately, I don't have my own horse right now, but I will one day. Um, so, Well, when yeah. you post those pictures, be sure to tag me. I would love to see the final outcome of this photo shoot. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's, it's happening in February. So we'll we'll release all the photos. We're trying to get a magazine cover right now. So. Nice. Well, tell me a little bit about what you're wearing, if you will, or unless you have something else that you'd prefer to show me. Sure. I mean, I'll show you a couple things. So, so this was my Renfest costume this year. Um, like I said, I came from Virginia and I loved hiking. Uh, beautiful mountains. It's a gorgeous place, right? And, and yes. then I moved to Texas for my job and it's, it's a pretty place, but there's not a lot of elevation where I live, um, unless you want to hike the freeways um, <laughs> and get up the on ramp. So that's, that's about what you got. So uh, actually the biggest Renaissance festival in North America is right outside Houston. And so I was like, well, I want to go. I went and I discovered, like, I was like, well, I'm going to make my own armor. I want to look cool. Decided I didn't want to pay for somebody else to do it. And I made my own and then I got the leather bug. And now we're here today. We got the leather bug. So, <laughs> now we, we sell uh, not only leather armor, but also uh, a lot of cosplay supplies so some examples i, I brought over um these are pretty popular these are just plain leather bracers we have them in a bunch of different styles different colors um another big popular item is we have elf ears what? So they're pretty simple they're they're just latex you just hook them on and there you go friendly right you become instant elf <laughs> Because everybody wants to be elf, right? Just add water. Um. <laughs> yeah, you can use them with spirit gum and things like that. But honestly, they stay on pretty good. You, you, unless you're, you know, trying to do some like CrossFit or something with them, they're pretty okay. <laughs> just wearing as is. Acrobatic. Wait, what was uh, that thing? We have like fangs, teeth. I didn't put any on, but. They're just like oh. little little fangs, okay. costume fangs, add to your costume. And then outside that, uh, I liked the craft. So we're launching some of our patterns this year. So like behind me, you can see here's a samurai helmet I'm working on for a customer. It's not finished yet, but we're the first launch we're doing is our whole samurai costume. And on top of that pattern, can you show us some of that stuff? close up so we can sort of see the the stitch work and all of these other yeah, cool so little... this is a this is a riveted one we also have a sewn version uh here is 
do you actually do battle in is that a leg piece yeah that goes on your shins so we, we do um combat armor as well yeah so uh we can make it fully padded fully custom um and if then you've got your molnir on the side of whatever you're wearing there on a d-ring what's that you got your Molnir there on a D-ring that you're wearing. I saw on your side, your little, little hip. I saw a, a little Molnir. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. No. So this is when you go to Renfest, you you got to drink out of the drinking horns. I don't have my yes. drinking horn in it right now, <laughs> but this is my my horn holster. So, oh, that's cool. And it yeah, just clips yeah, right on to your you. armor. You can engrave those and everything as well. And then that's we sell cool. actually all the supplies uh, to make your own armor as it kind of spawned from the first business, it made sense. So we've got like our custom press back here. We're one of the uh, largest suppliers of crystal rivets. What are crystal rivets? So you can just bling it out. Hold, hold I mean, very everybody close. likes doing, doing stuff themselves. Hold them very close uh, to the camera. Yes. And still, oh, I see. Okay. That's yeah. cool. So what? there's some accents on her piece. I don't know if you can see it from here, but just little crystals. Uh, doesn't have to be for leather. We have customers that use them for all sorts of things, but I mean, that leather's my passion, so. Now, might I ask to see if um, some close-ups, because it looks like you're, are they pauldrons that you're wearing or are they, yeah, you've got this cool tooling in them. Can you tell me about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, for these, I really wanted to go all out. I, it had been like two years and everybody else in my family got a custom armor set, uh, but I didn't have time to make one for myself. Uh -huh. um, so this year I was for sure going to make one for myself. And so, yeah, so we it's it's all hand tooled. It's just a design I found. I was like, all right. I feel like that middle part that goes right down the middle secretly like stashes a dagger in it or something. That's That like was kind of the idea. So it actually has... It's built such that uh, there's like a some foam. I cut out of some some. Uh, I had gotten a box that had like foam padding in it. Yeah. And I cut the pieces out so it actually keep it uh, structured. Yes. And then wet formed it. Nice. That oh, man, you you're like an assassin. You're you're sneaky. <laughs> it's fun. It's really fun. I love it. No, nobody, nobody's gonna mess with you. I was gonna pull up your Instagram here real quick and just cruise through that if we could. Absolutely. I don't. All right, let me. I've got it here, so let me get to the. Now this is what we were just looking at. That's back there on the mannequin. Correct. So that's the photo shoot that's coming coming up. Uh, the one that you can see right here, and and that's one of the bridles that we're showing. It wasn't the bridle I showed earlier. Um, so that's gonna be real nice. And then the other armor pieces that you see. That's Kayla. She's amazing. Um, she's going to be our model for for this shoot. Nice. And uh, be with the horse for us. There's what? my son, full armor set. So that's wow. the samurai armor set in kid version. Um, yeah, he kind of stole the show at Renfest this year. <laughs> Holy smokes. And just think, next year it will all be too small. <laughs> I know. I know. That's they so kind of Yep, so there's my little elven daughter. We've got um, our our tech is in the, the one with the gladiator outfit. That's also a popular one. So, yeah, we got plenty of, plenty of different costumes. Uh, the samurai, I would say, is probably the most popular. Um, that girl right there is the one who made these awesome bracers. Oh, nice. So all the props to her. And look at, I'm kind of seeing her leg piece down here also has some cool design work on that as well yep she picked that design herself she she did it all so she's she's awesome there's my daughter she loves to be on camera <laughs> i like her outfit that she's wearing for sure <laughs> yeah my own elven princess and then that's the one i'm wearing right now uh, i decided to take the mask off because i felt like might not be able to hear me as well but you know no. COVID it's time. Okay. what is a better time to go to like a Ren Fest when you have a mask anyways and not feel weird. <laughs> right? It's sort of like going out dressed up on Halloween. Nobody exactly. notices. Oh, there's the cool sparkle. Yeah, the crystals. Wow, there's so many colors to choose from. Holy smokes. There's oh, sparkle. look at that. Those are cool. Ooh, what's that? 
So that's our tree journal. Uh, I don't have one out here to show you, but that was a custom design I made. Uh, it, it pays a tribute back to my times hiking back in Virginia. I just love the woods. I love the forest, the nature. So each one's hand carved. Every tree is different. And uh, that's cool. you can come with a variety, you know, you want a sketchbook or a planner or lined, all those different options. That is cool. Uh, being the bibliophile that I am, I'm like, ooh, a book. <laughs> Look at that. That must have taken some time and work. Out of curiosity, how long does it take you to do a, like a full set of armor? What does the time frame look like on that? If somebody just wanted to order right today and then from design and creation all the way to finished product, what do, what is their wait time look like for that? So if it's a set that we already have that we just need to design to their size, you're looking at about two weeks. If it's something that is completely custom we have a whole process. We send you a form. You fill out the form of, you know, all your customization, if you will. We then draft up a pattern design. Like I said, we specialize in custom armor, so we get some pretty wild requests. Um, <laughs> and it's it's not just Renaissance stuff. You know, we do a lot of uh, Comic Con work. You know, Marvel characters, things like that. A lot of anime work. Um, so it all kind of depends on what you're wanting. If if you're wanting something fully custom, it's going to be depending on how involved, I guess, the... But you, but you give an estimate, I'm sure. Yeah, no, sure. Um, all our estimates for the custom armor is four to six weeks. It can be, you know, a shorter than that if it's easy, but, you know, it kind of depends on the design. Well, that your work is amazing, and thank you so much for sharing it with us today. Uh, you are participating in the magic word, which means that it should people order with you within this next week they will receive some manner of small bonus gift do you want to share it do you or do you want to keep it a secret i will share it okay let's see what we've got we are giving free ears free so, ears you can be a, here, a variety of different colors they're very makeup friendly uh okay. we're be using the white ones because those can be used with any kind of makeup and you can blend it to any color you want okay because um, you generally want the ear to be lighter than whatever your skin tone is. Um, so yeah. Well, I'm all about I'm all about earing up the world, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's crazy. There's a lot of them out I there. Mean, maybe I have a slight bias, but that's okay. <laughs> the more the better. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Is there anything you'd like to say to everybody before we let you go this afternoon? You know, just thanks for tuning in. Um, really excited to, you know, be on here and you know, if, if, if armor is something you want to do, we're launching the patterns this year. So actually next month. Nice. So I'm always happy to help anybody and, you know, answer any questions anyone has. It's a fun place. Cool. Well, thank you for, man, thank you for being so accommodating with that. And uh, with that said, then we will bid you a good, good afternoon, Sunday evening. I guess you're in Texas, so you must be two hours ahead of us here, central time zone. So. Yeah. All right. Well, have a good night then and enjoy. Have a good rest of your week as well coming. So appreciate it, guys. Take care. Yeah, no problem. All right. And then this brings us right around. And thanks, Carol, going to check out her bridles. Uh, that is very cool. I, you're a horsey person, huh? That's cool. Or at least your sister is a horsey person. So this brings us around to our last vendor of the day today, which is I love your I love your business name. <laughs> Cuddles and Rage. Hey, <laughs> Thank you for having me, Molly. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. I feel like Cuddles and Rage is kind of what happens to my cats when they've done something or they're doing something I don't want them to do. I'm like, I'm gonna give you corporeal cuddle punishment. Like I'm gonna hug you and hug you and hug you until you stop. And then pretty soon they're just like Wow. Yeah, that sounds about right. I have an 18 year old cat who I've locked out of the room. So that I did an interview earlier this week and she was like walking behind me. I was like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you, you, you get the vibe. <laughs> I totally do. All right. Well, please, if you will introduce yourself to our audience, tell us who you are and what your business is, like what you do, and give a shout out to anybody you'd like to. And then I will turn the screen over to you and we'll take a look at your work. 
Cool. Well, I'm Liz Reed. I'm one part of the art duo Cuddles and Rage, and I am mostly known for feud humor and uh, mixed media comics. So we uh, make a lot of our comics out of polymer clay dioramas, mm -hmm. uh, which is very different. And that's kind of what caught the eye of Hello Giggles, which is a website that um, years ago, uh, we were on and doing dioramas for them, which kind of kickstarted us it, into our world of uh, publishing books, which is where we are now. So I know now I took a look at your because you had an Amazon shop, if I recall correctly. I have an Etsy shop and um, we also have our book Bites of Terror, which came out last year at the start of the pandemic. <laughs> so that's on Amazon. And we also have our picture books that are on Amazon or in stores everywhere, wherever books are sold. So. Yes. Oh, wait, show me that again. Oh, wait, because wait. I, one of the things that I love about this, like that is. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, it's a, it is a horror anthology uh, with food. So um, we love horror, my husband and I do. So uh, do I. <laughs> I, the thing I that I'm loving about this so much is that I, I recently started doing just for the fun of it to kind of have a little like a little lighthearted bonus for our actual channel patrons and members on Patreon and here on YouTube. Uh, these little one off readings called the fairy tales for fossils, where I read like adult children's books, right? Like, you know, shut the F up and go to bed. Like yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when I saw your book, I and I then I was looking at it and I was going through the pages and I well, first of all, I realized immediately that you guys were not drawing those. It was almost like that you were literally making the whole diorama and then photographing it yeah. to make all of the illustrations, which I think is awesome. I've actually got, I think, one other book from an artist that was local here years ago. It was kind of a similar fashion, not with, mm -hmm. I think you guys are clay. Is that what you said you were? Yeah, polymer clay. So like I have one of our characters here. So this is kind of, this is the cake creeper. So do you ever share, do you yeah. sell these characters when they're um, done? I do sell our characters from our previous books, um, Sweet Competition and Sweet Success, which are picture books, but I'm starting to put um, the guys from Bites of Terror up on our Etsy. I just have to, um, I have to change them a little bit because when we shoot them for the book, they have like these very flexible limbs yes. um, that pop out. So I just have to give them permanent limbs. <laughs> or else I don't think you would probably want like a, <laughs> uh, well, you might want a movable puppet, but it won't be the kind that that's permanent. So I'm we just have to I love that toast so much. That toast is the best. Yeah, we have like peanut butter and jelly. So and these guys are going up in our shop this week. So we have a mixture of like one-off stuff that we keep going. Like we have like really rabid fans who look out for our new magnet designs. Um, so if you if we put something out, you get there quick because they sell it in 10 minutes. Um, and then we also kind of have our prints and cards that are all diorama styles and our books too. So we have a whole mix of stuff. We're like, is, is this something new? I'm laughing. And it's making my eyes water. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, I've got to get that book and I've got to read it for one of our little like fireside. I don't know. It's just sometimes it's late at night and I'm like, I want to do something. I know I'm going to read crazy books that would not otherwise probably be deemed appropriate. <laughs> oh my gosh, absolutely. Those are the best kind of books. You know? <laughs> like, like our goal with Bites of Terror was to create a you know, kind of like an edgy but family friendly horror right. anthology. So that like, because for me, I grew up on horror with my mom introducing it to me. So I wanted to, and Jimmy and I wanted to create a book where, you know, parents who love horror can share their love of horror with their family and then hopefully get them hooked on some of the classics. <laughs> so without it being way off into that's actually probably too scary right look at no, that yeah yeah we treat we try and um make it more weird and quirky yeah uh, than santa the <laughs> a santa conda i mean he's terrifying <laughs> he's children, so yeah you know pick that one up with with a warning <laughs>
<laughs> oh man, these are good. And look, just look at all your cute little, you guys must have so much fun making these. So I find them so adorable because, well, what part, partially because I already have a penchant for food jewelry. I, I have like little donut rings and cake earrings and stuff like that. So I'm just looking at all of this like, oh, this could be like happy jewelry. Bye. Thank you. Um, if you scroll back up, there were two like enamel pins of two corn dogs, and um, the crazy story. We do like animation and hand animation stuff too, and so we have this. Where do you use hand hand animation? Yeah, we we put our hands in there and like you know like we did with the kid like playing with your action figures. Oh. So we'll take our sculptures and we'll have like a little diorama scene, and then we'll shoot them as if we're telling like a story. And so with. Uh, Tammy and Susan, we have this uh, very popular on TikTok uh, show called Corn Dog Drama, which is basically a soap opera with junk food. And uh, I feel like if you if you want to get a taste of our humor, then go look at Corn Dog Drama. It's on YouTube as well. But um, it was crazy. We put that up on TikTok, and then it went up to like 2.5 million views. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that like people were like so into like hardcore soap operas with junk food. <laughs> So if you're not a horror person, then go check out our soap operas. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, that it's so funny because I'm like, I love soap operas too. Well, I mean, I, at least I used to. I, I haven't watched things like that for a long time. But growing up, that was a thing that we watched all the time in the house. So uh, yeah. the, the Fairy Queen mom here was a Stephen King fan. So I've got the horror. You know, I started off reading Stephen King and, and Dean Arcoons and all of that stuff and eventually evolved into things like Lovecraft. And then she also was was big days of our lives. So oh, every day. That soundtrack. <laughs> right? Every day. That was a thing. And if there was couldn't be there, then it got recorded and then watched later. So I'm like, saying it was recorded on VHS. Like, well I'm just like, I love food jewelry. I love horror. I like soap operas. And I'm like, I think I could watch a strange junk food horror soap opera. <laughs> You know, there's some cheating going on. I'm not going to spoil it, but you know, it gets it gets pretty intense. There are theories going around on TikTok. <laughs> I'm dying. Okay, so, uh, oh my gosh, I have the wrong ticker that's going. I got so like sucked into what we were talking about. I mean, that's not the right one. Here we go. There, that's you. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got sucked right into what we were talking about, and I was that like, was perfect. That's what I want. <laughs> well, um, do you have other things there that you want to show us this afternoon? Yeah, I, I'm, I wanted to just to share some of our other books um, okay. that we did with Harper Collins. Um, so we got to do this whole like sweet series um, with like foods doing cute sweet things. So this is our very first picture book that we ever did called Sweet mm -hmm. Competition, um, mm -hmm. and it's about these two cherry twins. Uh, who uh, don't get along and then have to work together and enter a Sunday competition. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and it's one of my favorite books to read to kids because um, I always have to ask them if they like weird things like celery ice cream. So this is kind of a look at it too. I would like celery ice cream. I would. I know, no, totally, totally. There are a few kids out there who are like raise their hand that they would eat celery ice cream. I'm so proud of them. <laughs> um, and this other book, Sweet Success with Harper Collins, which is another picture book. Um, it's about finishing what you start. So I feel like if you're an artist or you have a budding artist at home, like this is a good one. This is probably uh -huh. autobiographical. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just a little bit of stuff. Um, oh, and then one other thing I wanted to share is just kind of like the scale of um, our props and bites of terror. Um, so in one of our uh, stories, we have like this little banana reporter. And so I just wanted to share like this handmade ah, tape recorder. <laughs> so, Whoa. Uh, this is kind of, the scale of yeah, it's kind of 112 scale if you do dollhouses. So this is made with like a cricket, like a little audio tape thing. But um, yeah, so a little bit of our handmade humor. Oh, and um, yeah, I don't know if we're getting to it yet, our little freebie. Oh, yeah, you can. Okay. Because okay. you are, you definitely are in the magic word, so. I'm magic wording it. What is it? Moon? Moon? Frost? Frost moon. Frost moon. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like something I'd want to eat. So. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so if you pick up a copy of Bites of Terror, either from our Etsy shop or Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold, um, and you email us, if you're on Etsy, then just write Moonfrost in the comments yeah. or send us, you know, an email with the copy receipt and we will give you one of our scratch and sniff cards. Uh, Jimmy and I handmade these and we picked out different scents that you'll smell throughout the book. So it's like a 360 reading experience. So, yes, yeah, so like when I'm you buy one, one, I'm getting it. Oh, I'll send, I'll send you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if you get to like page 16, Fatal 3, you scratch it, you sniff it, and then you read it. And it's just, it'll bring the experience to life. And let me tell you, it was crazy. We had to smell over like 50 smells to pair at the book. And it was, it was nauseating. I didn't even get smells onto a card. <sighs> that was a logistical challenge. Um, and so we worked with this really cool small company. I forgot what state they're in. Um, but basically they would apply the scent to these clear sticker sheets. And then we would hand sticker them to um, these cards that we made with a local printer. Uh, so cool. Yeah, so we were really happy to pull it off. Uh, but I know some people haven't made it through the, heart, the whole card. They're like, I made it to like page 65. <laughs> it's okay, it gets weird. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. I feel, I almost feel like if I if I get this, I need to do the, the live reading of it. My, my fairy tales for fossils with the scratch and sniff. That way people can see the face that I make, sort of like when you taste weird foods, you're like, okay, here we go, right? I'm gonna, go, I'm putting this in my mouth. And then you're like, Oh, yeah, that's like that's like every holiday when I get my nephew like the bedazzled jelly beans. I kind of want the gross ones. I'm like, give me something gross. I can take it. And that's what I feel like with this card. <laughs> the Alberti bots, give me the earthworm or the earwax, you know, the dirt. I stuff at earwax, but you know, do what you got to do. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so awesome. Well, Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Is there anything else you want to show us? We have a couple a couple minutes left. Oh, sure, totally. Um, actually, I wanted to show some of the. I thought your viewers might be interested in some of our like pop culture sculptures that we've done. Oh, cool. Um, so we do stuff with galleries from time to time. I actually just recently um, curated a uh, all female and queer horror show with spoke art. Oh, um, so if you go to Spoke Art's site and you type in, uh, <laughs> draw me like one of your final girls, then you'll see the show that I curated with my friend Tracy Ching, um, and be able to check out all these new, like, horror artists. If you're a horror fan, that's great to check out. Um, but right here I have a piece that okay. I created for a gallery Very show. close and rotate slow. Close and rotate. Okay, I don't want to blind you with my, nope, you turn my light off. No, it's, no, no, it's good. Oh, there, it was good. Oh, okay. You just that have was... to it slow so the camera has time to, yeah. Okay. This was from an official uh, Monty Python. Monty, I know. I was just going to say. I got to yeah, say, <laughs> say, I love this piece so much that I was like, I have to keep it. <laughs> this is just an example of the pop culture stuff that we make and that you could see um, at the gallery shows. So go Look check out. Bones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Classic. So yeah, I just have a lot of fun sculpting weird things. And so I'm thankful if it's like in the format of horror, which we've done work with Fangoria, or if it's like pop culture stuff, uh, we're just thankful that uh, I get to live and make art, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I, so now I feel like I have to also stock your page. I really loved that peanut butter and jelly. Like those guys were so cute. Oh, thank you. Do you want to see them make out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, sometimes I talk to my sculptures. Sometimes I'll make them and I'll be like, you two kiss. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when, you, when you're freelance and you work by yourself. <laughs> I work with my husband too, but most of the time, oh, I, I I cannot, I can't be. I'm guilty. I'm guilty as charged of this, not because I I've got my own that I've made, but I have like a vast creature collection. I just love to collect all kinds of handmade creatures that and stuff that people do. Like this one is literally this is this is one of my goblins. It's very dusty. 
because it's up on my desk, but this was like a handmade goblin sculpture thing that a friend of mine did. And so I just like, I have stuff like this everywhere because I, I find them and I'm like, they're so adorable and they need liberation. And if they come home with me, they will have so many friends. And so, but then sometimes when I feel like I need inspiration or whatever, like I walk around and I put them next to each other because they seem like those two should be friends and maybe these guys will like each other. And I don't, they talk to each other. No, you probably gotta have like a whole storyline going. Yes. I, do that. Like, yes. I, I do the same. So I'm attracted to the cute, weird things too. And so our, is, our, our buddies can hang out together. <laughs> these guys, this is probably, even though it's a, it's a very old strawberry shortcake, a sidekick animal that was one of my first ones that I had when I was a little kid. Uh, and so I keep him with me, the uh, my little monkey guy, and then like his little girlfriend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boyfriend, girlfriend? So, Going on little dates at the desk? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, I've definitely, I, I've got a whole bunch just, just right here. Like oh, I've got so them. Cool. Oh my gosh. My actually my wand maker who uh, I have my own Etsy store as well and I sell handmade magic wands and this was what he made me this year just a spontaneous little gift he made me a handmade gnome. Oh, I love it. I love I love the simplicity in it and so much personality too. That's yeah. what I do. <laughs> so so I'm just like oh the peanut butter jelly they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> oh since you like creatures and stuff um you guys should check out um Zugu. What's uh, Zugu, um, Z O O G U U. Uh, she's on Instagram. Her name is Jen Gobitsa, and she does like creatures. Um, what is it called? Like uh, taxidermy creatures where you hang them on the wall. Yeah, like, weird stuff too. Um, so it's all different kinds. I think she just did the puppet for the New Mutants movie. You know, the little puppet in there, the dragon. She, she made that puppet. Yeah. So you should have her on your show. She's really cool. <laughs> she came right up when I, oh yeah, she came right up when I put her name in. So it was a Z-O-O-G-U-U. -U. Mm -hmm. These are definitely awesome and cool. Tentacle, unicorn heads. <laughs> okay. I, like, I love my artist community. You know, that's what it's about. Making art and making friends. And Well, maybe I will reach out to her and say that you recommend it. And perhaps we'll see her then in a few weeks. Who knows? That would be amazing. <laughs> I will come in. <laughs> All right. Well, that basically brings us to the end of the show today. Thank you so much for joining us, Liz. And everybody watching at home, just remember, you guys, uh, every vendor that you see here that has the magic mushroom next to their name, you can put the word Frost Moon, that is this week's magic word, and you will get a bonus so with your purchase from that vendor. Yes, the little bites of terror, scratch and sniff. <laughs> 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 um, yes, so it's Sunday. Uh, our next show will be on Wednesday for Fay News. And then after that, it will be, of course, Friday with Author Reads. Remember that you can join our channel by hitting the join button or and or our Patreon if you want to be entered into every drawing that we do. And also there's other patron benefits and bonuses that go along with all of that. So uh, please consider supporting us. And with that said, I think that's everything we've got for you guys today. It was a great show and I hope you have an awesome rest of your week, Liz. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I'm going to buzz that button, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes. This year was one of my one of my goals, if you will, to say different different adverbs with the, you know, or adverbs, adverbs, verbs, adverbs, whatever. Different things to do to the bell. <laughs> I like it. I like it. No, just ding in the bell. We're buzzing the bell. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I mean, I, I do this three times a week. I got tired of just saying ring the bell every week. So I decided I was going to change it up. I, I'm into it. I'm, I'm going to. So every week it's going to change? No, like three times a week. 
okay, yeah, I'm going to read those a week. So People should, should suggest stuff to you. Sometimes they do. Uh, our big show where people a lot of time really, really interact with us when we have our whole fake crew is actually, we kind of like our a uh, little bit of gossipy, uh, after show gossipy, but our fake news on Wednesdays, we have the whole crew here. So it's not just me, it's me and Gunther and Ion and Count Morbid and Famous Data and just like uh, Stormy the Fairy. We have a whole bunch of us. And uh, that's when usually our, our, audience is super chatty and talky because we're just doing crazy things on that show so that's the that's what also where our weekly word usually comes from as well so we take audience suggestions for the weekly word so and then it just rolls from wednesday to wednesday oh my gosh i love this so much i'm gonna have to like get my tea and just <laughs> start oh, right. making suggestions that day <laughs> that's, that's basically it hey who knows man you could come you could actually come on author reads if you wanted to oh, thank Your you book. i'm always free hit me up <laughs> I, I, like considering that you have the books yeah all right well whew, i feel like i could probably st sit here and talk for you know another half hour so <laughs> i will not keep everybody away home good night everybody thank you for joining us and uh we will see you on wednesday i hope bye bye, bye. hello friends this is go for hammerheads thank you for checking out fairy princess lolly's channel if you enjoyed this video please hit the like and subscribe button and if you'd like to support these magical creations, fly over to our Patreon and join the fairy family. Safe travels.